Well, my guest today can probably best be described as a force. When when she's in the room, you know it. She is a successful voice actor. She helps people with branding and LinkedIn and networking. And most impressively, she is what I call a moonshot taker. We'll talk more about that in a little while. Please welcome to the podcast my dear friend and work wife, Naked Jen Greenfield. <laughs> You're so sweet. Thank you, Paul, for having me. I'm really excited to join you today. Well, yeah, I've been looking forward to this one for a long time because we've known each other now coming up on two years. Yep. Uh, it was at VO Atlanta where I heard this voice from next to me at the t at the lunch table say, you look like Ben Folds. <laughs> time you did <laughs> you had ben fold spectacles you were sporting like this casual zip up hoodie uh there you help? go does that help it does <laughs> you were missing the keyboard you were not serenading me but no it no i don't know I, I can't tell you it just hit me i was like wow you look like ben folds and then you got sucked into my web i'm sorry my friend i did and it's one of the best things that's ever happened to me, both personally and professionally. Uh, we So it'll be two years ago, this VO Atlanta. We that's met right. at lunch. Uh, I can only describe that meeting as our little interaction over Ben Folds. And then you held court over nine other people at the lunch table. And I thought, man, this this woman, she's going to she's going to do something somewhere. I don't I'm not sure what yet or to whom, but she's going to do something somewhere. Uh, and we've been we've been fast friends ever since. Uh, much to my joy. So, yeah. uh, lots I want to talk about today. First of all, I just saw the other day on social media. I think you just celebrated your tenth year in the business. Talk to me about that. I have not been in the business for ten years, Paul. Then, okay, so maybe I should check my coffee. Am I drinking? No. no what did so I see? You saw that ten years ago I auditioned for The Voice in uh no. yes in philly so i'm actually um i'm the i am the voice actor you love and you hate and i'll tell you why because i have i grew up i was in, cast in my first opera at seven i went to college on a full ride musical theater scholarship i have done on camera work i absolutely was born an entertainer uh, i love choreography i love singing and I am a pandemic baby. So yeah, we all are, right? Hit, at this point. Well, when it hit, I knew I had to pivot. I actually did an interview with Dave Fenoy from Lori Allen's guest room, by the way, in California, um, several months ago. And when I told him this, he went, Wow, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait, what? Um, yes, I have been in this business less than five years. Wow. And that shocks people. But I think one of the things you're going to touch on is how I approach the industry and how I approach work, which definitely, I think, does make me a little unique. Not that I am the only person doing it, but to be at the point I'm at in a matter of years uh, is a little bit different than other people's journeys. I think that's true. I also think that you and I uh, share uh, roughly uh, what I'll call a go-getter's mindset, right? For sure. We're not sitting back waiting for the inbox to fill up. We're not waiting for agents to knock on our door. Um, we're going out and hustling. That's right. And not that you and I are the only ones doing that by far, of course. Exactly. But there are two camps, right? There are folks that sit back and wait for stuff to happen. And then there are folks, and I don't know anybody that embodies this more than you, Folks that just go get it. I described you earlier as a moonshot taker. Talk about the voice audition. That kind of set the stage, right? Yeah. So even in my post 10 years ago, talk about setting the stage for really all entrepreneurial endeavors I take on. If you never try, you fail. I mean, the, you have failed. It, it's the it old Michael Jordan no. quote. Oh, you're going to miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Exactly. Right. And even in my post from 10 years ago, I said, if you don't try, you fail. And if you try, you have a 50-50 chance of yes. So even 10 years ago, I'm a wife, a mom. At the time, I had two little ones. 
And even my amazing husband, who has to be to um, survive life. <laughs> that uh, guy. Even, he said, and every time I audition for something, he said, why can't it be you? I don't right. question that, but that's his approach too, is yeah. it has to be someone, why not you? Yeah. And so having that mentality, um, another thing that you and I both do, and I, I want to also say, I just enjoy your content so much. And I think that's one of the things that really has connected us is we don't have to agree on every single aspect of a topic, but we are really in the same lane when it comes to a lot of things about hustle culture, about marketing, about growing your business. And so anyway, so one of the things that we do agree on is, is niching down. And I speak on this all the time to have an aspiration, a goal, an objective to be something like, I want to voice for Disney. Good Lord Almighty, that is absolutely the biggest, most broad thing you can aspire for. And I, and, and although great, it's, it's, it doesn't, there's no path, there's no map to get you to this big thing. Just so a destination, talk, that's it. That's it. So yep. when you talk about these moonshot things, I'm being really specific, really specific. So for example, uh, most recently, uh, Hillary Farr, who has been the um, host or co-host of a show on HGTV called Love It or List It. She's retiring from that show and moving on. Coincidentally, I, by the way, narrated by Tina Morosco. Exactly, which is a wonderful coincidence to have uh, and also <laughs> to have a wonderful relationship with her. Anyway, to the point... For years, I'm like, I need to host an HGTV show. I want to have my own HGTV show. That's saying I want to be on Disney. I mean, it's right. just this big, huge thing. Well, it doesn't have any form to it. It has no form. So, so when I, so when Hillary leaves, I'm like, okay, no. Now, what I want to do is I want to be the host of this show, and I'm going to talk to this executive producer, and I am going to talk, Paul, talking to people. That is the other thing you talk about is relationship building. And I am such a gigantic advocate of it. Have the dream, have the goal, the objective, niche it down, and then find out who can help you make it happen. And this is not, not to get a off topic. Thing. Yeah, go ahead. Because at that point, whether or not you achieve the goal, whether or not you get the HGTV show, you still now have those relationships. And that's worth its weight in gold. So I'll give you another example. And, and people just, I mean, and I, even when I do my, I, I speak at different conferences, different voiceover conferences, and I'll talk about LinkedIn, I'll talk about networking, I talk about relationship building. And one of the things that I always do is I show proof, I'll screenshot messages, because it's one thing to kind of give a general, sure. you, know, you should try this. Now I'm going to show you, this is what I said. This is what I did. And guess what? I got a reply. So most recently, I, um, I had another moonshot goal that I was going for. And again, really niched it down. And I decided, I didn't tell anybody, but now everybody will know that I wanted to be the promo voice for Taylor Tomlinson on her new show after midnight. Now I did know that, but it's because oh. you have a text you and oh, okay. I had. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Maybe I did tell you. Well, now yeah, that was knows. private, but all that to say. Um, I have done promo coaching. I have worked with some fantastic coaches. Um, and guess what? I talked to them. I said, what do you think? And they were like, I love it. She's a one of the first female late night hosts we're having. I found out because I did my research, the head writer, also female. So I'm nice. thinking not just because it's me, but I'm like, we need a female promo. Let's keep the girl power momentum going, my friend. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. So what did I do? I start reaching out to, I start doing my research, reading articles, who's producing the show, who's the writer, who's all the things. So then I found the uh, CMO of CBS, the chief marketing officer, and I emailed him and I said, hey, I want to make some promo magic. And I went ahead and created promo samples specifically a little short demo. There was three spots of me doing Taylor Tomlinson's promo. 
Brilliant. So I, yeah. So I built it. I also included my commercial and animation demo because I know when they do inner sure. narration stuff, they like to do fun clips. Anyway, yep. I reach out. I'm very specific about, hey, everything I already said. Here's some, I even put together some promo samples for your convenience. And guess what? He wrote me back. Of course he did. And he said, guess, and then, and then he said, you know, I'm actually not the decision maker on this, but right? I have what I have all of it. I have everything that you've sent me and I will forward it to our creative department. Boom. He can Boom. be lying through his teeth. I don't care. I here's got why I, Here's yeah. why I think he's really not. Number oh, one. Think. Number one, you've shown yourself to be a professional in the business and not just some, you know, Jane Average off the street. Number two, you've shown you've done your research and your homework, right? You've put the promo spots together. You showed up prepared with a solution, not just a beg, right? Not just a, hey, wouldn't it be great if, uh, you know, this stranger that you've never met before, if you just helped him, you showed up with some preparation and that makes all the difference in the world. Yep. And that's the key. And, and, uh, and here's why I also know that, and you'll, you'll, you'll giggle why I know it wasn't a fluke because I emailed him back. I gave it, I gave it a minute. I said, you know what? Also, by the way, <laughs> 180 here, I also host a podcast that for voice actor. And I said, and you know, we're always talking about marketing. Sure. If you'd ever like to join us, let me know. Guess what? He emailed me back. No hey, kidding. not a huge podcast person, but thank you so much for thinking of me. And and here we are, you know, and that's one of the things. So the moonshot thing, this is the other part that I talk about, is to remember when people get, you know, I'm going to use the word scared, apprehensive, maybe unsure. Should I email? Should I call? Should I send the DM? Is to remember that it is just another human on the other end of the line. Full stop. Every time. Every single time. No. And they one, have a name. They have a name. And they might, and they probably have a family. Um, and the thing to remember is, too, that understanding that what you don't like, so you wouldn't do that to them. And if you, and again, if you never ask, the answer is always no. But be cool. Be funny. Just be 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 specific have purpose in reaching out to them but just remember they are no better than you exactly. they might be smarter than you um they might make more money than you but that's the other thing i say is no one is better than me and so it's now just the thing another that, the thing that i want to kind of suss out of that too is when you asked about the podcast yeah you asked without putting him on the spot Right. You you actually asked without asking. You said, hey, I'm going to leave this open ended. Yep. If you'd like to be a guest, let me know. That puts the ball in the control in his court. And he was you gave him away a, a polite out is what you gave him. For right? sure. And I think there's a you know, a, if we had just glossed past that and a lot of people might not have, have uh, picked up on that. Uh, have you heard? I got to find out. Have you heard anything from the creative department at CBS yet? No. <sighs> but I'm not, I'm not upset though, Paul, because good things are happening. Things change all the time sure. and they can change like that. Now I'll tell you, I, I went on, I even reached and, out. And you don't know what the timeline is. Oh, no! right? and that's, thank you. You've, you've absolutely led me to my next point, which is I also reached out to a friend of ours, Mark Ryder. I said, Mark, I said, I, I, I want to know like what I just ducks in a row. Because again, I'm not, I put myself out there. I ask the question, I show who I am, you know, here's what I sound like. And at any point, a buyer can call you and go, oh yeah, we got a thing now, right? So I asked him, I said, tell me, what am I not thinking of? Like, you know, when CBS calls me, not if, when, when CBS right? calls of course. me and says, hey, we want you. And one of the things he said was, You've got to be prepared to say you are available at a moment's notice. And to Absolutely. me, Absolutely. That That's the nature really, of network promo. It is. Yeah. And to take it a step further, and this is for anyone who's considering, well, really any voiceover, whether you get with an agent, when you start leveling up your game, 
is having a conversation with your family. And a lot, I genuinely think people forget this point because Absolutely. if you are on the hook, I can't make dinner. You're going to have to cover dinner, babe. Or, hey, kids, I, I got to get in the studio. You're going to have to work on your homework on your own. Or, hey, can you cover and pick up the kids from school? I have to get to this because the minute you tell the buyer, oh, sorry, I, I'm, I'm at the, you know, I just, I'm, I'm at the thing or I'm in the car. Ugh, yeah. that's not good well, so yeah i mean you know if you're doing network promo you still have to live but you have to live <laughs> within about 15 minutes of your yeah. house right <laughs> yeah uh donovan cornitz was the first one that kind of hit me to uh to that those those uh uncomfortable sometimes conversations with family not only happen around hey can you cover this while i've got to do a job in my world working with folks that are trying to build, you know, go from level A to level B to level C, right? A lot of times they uh, have been in this business for quite a while and they're getting pushback from the spouse. Yep. And what I tell them oftentimes is you've got to have what may help is, a, is an uncomfortable conversation where you say something along the lines of, look, this building a career in a business here means a lot to me. And I know that it's it's taking some of my time away from family. Uh, I need help. Like, I'm not going to be able to do this by myself in a bubble. We're going to need to work together as a team. Here's what I need. And what can I give you to help you help all of us, you know, help me and help the whole family, right? That's a tough, uncomfortable conversation to have. But I feel like it's a pressure release right much like it would be in the in the network with the network promo conversation so i just want to bring it up those, those uncomfortable conversations with family because our family is our team right well, and certainly for moms i can't i'm Absolutely. in i'm in i'm Even in more a, so for moms yeah i'm in a mom uh, vo facebook group i'm not giving anything away there but i'm but there are like hey i need my husband to do the thing like how do i have that conversation so it, especially for moms who historically handle kids and housework and, you know, cooking and cleaning and those things. And when you're yeah. like, I got to be in the studio for a few hours and those things don't get done. So I think this was a really good thing. I don't hear this talked about enough. So I'm glad we, we ventured down this path. And I think the other big conversation in that vein, Jen, is when we're freelancers, especially when we have a spouse or a partner who has a corporate job, goes into an office, leaves the home every day, there's this unwritten assumption that, oh, my partner's home and they have free time. They can let the dog out, run the groceries, head to the bank, get the dry cleaning. I think the conversation has to be no, politely. This is a, my business too. And I need to protect that time. Not that I'm unwilling to do the right. occasional errand when it's an emergency, when there's really no other option, but it's just, you know, it's like, I'm not the errand boy or errand girl of the house just because I work from home. That's right. Yeah. And I think this goes back to, you know, my dear, wonderful, sweet, darling husband who has the patience of a saint. Um, has He's understood from the, well, one, we're a military family. He's since right. retired, but that was the other part is, um, you know, we've lived all over the world. I grew up in the army and married Air Force. And when wow. you move every two every two to three years, um, most places, they don't even want to hire you. Like when they know you are the spouse of someone in the military, they're like, by the time we get you trained, you're PCSing anyway. So, yep. you know, nicely, we're not interested. Um, <clears throat> so ever since he and I have been married, I have always, when we show up somewhere, I start teaching a dance class. I start teaching fitness. I you know, just, I, I had a sewing business for like seven years. I provided baby products for boutiques all over the United States, things I could do from home, uh, with kids napping or, sure. you know, potty training and all the things. But so he's historically, that's kind of just the understanding we've had. But when you are a serial entrepreneur, right, that's just kind of who you are. You're like, yeah, I get it. But when you're freelance and I love that word that you use, because I think it's even different than, um, entrepreneur in the regard that you've got to find the work. Yeah. You know, it's, um, and you have to sell your, you are your product. Um, but, but yeah, understanding that there's so much flexibility in that. 
and and so i'm very i'm very very lucky that he gets it um and we've just kind of already had that relationship so anyway w well, uh, you know, as far as I know, he's completely fictional because I've never met him. <laughs> he's so, like Dolly Parton's husband. I know. <laughs> un until I shake the man's hand, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say he's a fictional character. Yep. But but uh, he is definitely husband of the year. That much yep. uh, I do know. I introduced you as Naked Jen, and for those uh, maybe watching <laughs> clips, maybe watching this video, they're gonna understand why. <laughs> Uh, tell us about how that got started. And, and here's a question. Is it part of your branding now? I love this question. So the story actually is, it's, it's not that amazing. And it won't I be was, surprising for anybody watching. Now I was doing, um, an advanced animation course with Lori Allen and Susan Palio and outside we live in Scottsdale. So I've got a little pool, a little hot tub. And so it was an evening class on zoom. And I had hopped in the pool, just, you know, chill before the, the class started. And when I came in, you know, when you're damp, like you're not peeling pants on, right? Right. Well, mindlessly, I just went and grabbed a strapless sundress, just something you'd put on, you know, like a cover up over your swimsuit. And I just pulled it on. And as soon as I sat down, Lori said, all right, guys, we're going to get started. And Naked Jen is going to read first. <laughs> and it was done. It there we go done the hashtag was made and she and i to this day do not have a correspondence where it's hashtag i'm not naked right now uh, uh not naked Lori. hey naked Je you know are you partly and it just it just turned into a thing but i love that you brought up the branding part because as you know and i'm not I don't think this, it's a little ego. I am, I'm a multifaceted creative. I just have, I do lots and lots of different things. Um, so branding for me is, I love branding first of all, but the naked gen part is not part of my identity. And I don't think it's part of my branding. I, I read somewhere, branding is what people say about you when you leave the room. And, and I as far it. as I know, you've never left the room and no one has ever said to me, what, was she naked? Was she naked? Thank <laughs> you. So that's perfect. So you're you're absolutely sending me down the right path. So then again, I haven't met Andy yet. So well, yeah, okay, yeah, there you go. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but so the thing about so what people you know say about you when you say the when you leave right. the room, and I and I really so when people talk about um, you know you shouldn't do your own branding. Well, I agree with that. But what I tell people is. What people say about you when the, you leave the room, yes, but you get to set the tone while you're in the room. And so, although I don't say, hey, don't, do, don't specifically do your own branding, you can guide people. So the naked gen part, guess what? It's silly. It's silly. It's, it's Absolutely. my joke to tell. I never am like ashamed or like, oh my gosh, people call me naked. Gen I, I literally, first of all, I don't care. But second of all, it, it is part to a degree of my branding in that my personality is fun. It's silly. And again, I know I'm not actually naked. My children know that people call me naked, Jen. Again, I started them early understanding that I will embarrass them. <laughs> any chance. as any good parent should right but anyway so to your point you know no it it the 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 joke is part of my branding uh, you know identifying as part of me being fun and just living my life freely and you said something earlier that i want to circle back to that you know one of the things people have said about me is they say you're fearless absolutely well and I, to a degree, but I like to say confident. And the difference meaning, I mean, you, you do have fears, you do have apprehensions, and I think they are innate. They are something just every human should have. You'd be a little weird if you weren't scared of something. But it's just owning who you are. And it's hard for a lot of people to get to that place, to go, you know what, this is how I was built. This is what I look like. Sometimes I'm, I'm fluffier. That's the word I like to use. Sometimes I'm more toned, but you know what? I own it. And 
this is who I am. And I think so many more people would get to that place of confidence with their, their business, with their marketing, with their email correspondence. If you get to a place of going, I know who I am and I know what I want, that's when the moonshot things happen. Yep. And the fortitude to say, you know what, no matter what, I'm still going to be me, right? Love it. No matter what. Look, and I think a lot of people, I think we have this sort of implied mindset that nothing is ever supposed to go wrong. Mm. And when it does, it's a bad thing, right? Uh, you have not made your last mistake, nor have I. I'm going to make 20 before I get out of this room after the, <laughs> after the podcast, right? I know. <laughs> So, uh, you know, let's put that aside. And it, confidence to me is saying to yourself, I know I'm going to make mistakes. I know bad stuff is going to happen, but I will handle it. Yes. I have the confidence in myself that will, no matter what comes up, I'm going to handle it. And here's your indicator. You've yes. been around this long, right? You're not dead yet. So chances are you're doing a thing or two right. And you're going to be able mm -hmm. to handle whatever comes up moving forward. Um, I want to talk uh, a little bit about your story and how you got started in this business. You said it's been less than five years, which to me is is kind of mind boggling because I want to use that as an entree into uh, you mentioned hustle culture. And I want to talk yeah. about that a little bit, too. But how did you get started in voiceover? So, yeah. So, again, had um, a very strong background in uh, performance, entertainment. I went to college, did musical theater, was in all the operas. So I've done the improv. I've done the acting classes. I was a choreographer and I also, like I said, taught fitness. I did that for many, many years. So very comfortable talking, very comfortable um, memorizing lines and and entertaining people like that's just what I love. Any you know, whenever I cover a song, it it's just to bring out an emotion. So I had the skill. So when the pandemic, um, ha well, just before the pandemic had happened, I had just finished um, a show. We were living in where were we living? Connecticut. I think we were living in Connecticut at the time. So lots of musicals, cabaret shows, and things up there. And I, yeah, I was like, you know. I got to, I've got to pivot, right? How many times have we heard that word? Right. Um, and so I jumped in, I started doing my research. That's one of the things I do. And I think that's what helps me a lot too, which I've already mentioned it before. Who do I need to talk to? What, you know, what information do I need? I really do my research. And so, yeah, I started researching it, uh, voiceover and researched equipment. Hadn't joined. I love your videos. I had not joined a Facebook group yet. Okay. And so I hadn't gone there. I also wasn't, believe it or not, I wasn't super duper active on social media um, several years ago. And so, yeah, I mean, again, I'm a unique story, but Paul, I signed on. It was one of the pay to plays and don't ask me which, cause I've really tried. I don't remember. I had my first job in two weeks. And wow. I had my first direct, directed session two weeks after that. Wow. That's I started in crazy. October and I, and, and my first directed session was in November and, and it's just gone from there. Uh, the then what is, okay, I got my feet wet. Now it was moving into coaching. Now it was, you know, really more of the fundamentals that we've all talked about. Right. We talk about it in VO booth besties. You talk about it. So I mean, I, yeah, I'm a, a feet first person, but not everybody is like that. And I also don't encourage that because not everyone is me. Right. right. And you, if you come in super shaky, the mic picks that up, Absolutely. Right? you know, so, so I jumped in, uh, but I had the back. That's the other thing, Paul, I had the acting background. I, right. I understood the nuance of a script. I understood the emotion. I understood who's my audience. So I don't, I kind of just feel more like coming into voiceover was just that other quiver, that other creative quiver I was putting in there. Because again, I sing, I dance on camera, on stage. I was already doing those things. People who come from, you know, I, a very corporate job, for example, wouldn't necessarily have 
all of that background to support suddenly, you know, going, all right, I'm going to transition Absolutely. into this. So I think that's, that definitely was on my side. Yeah. You had the skills built. All you had to do was refine them for, for voiceover. Yes. And that's, that's a big deal because there's a lot of time building the skill when most people are starting from scratch, right? For sure. Uh, let's, so, uh, we got started a few years ago. Do you remember what it was that you went, huh? voiceover no 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 and some like, people do some people don't they have the moment no i mean it, i didn't i i saw it as another create i'm just i'm a creative capital c full sure. stop when people are like what are your pronouns i'm like creative um but it's it was just another opportunity to grow me grow me creatively, grow me as a person. It wasn't that I was watching cartoons with my kids. I wish I had a better story to say, ah, oh, yeah, I was watching cartoons with my kids and heard this voice. And I was like, I want to do that. Right. It, it, it wasn't that I just, I love a challenge and voiceover, my friend, it is a challenge. Yes, and it is. Says otherwise, yes, like, it is. No, it is. It is. A, it is a challenge. So although I went in confident, feet first, booked my first couple jobs pretty quick. That's like you said, that's when you start refining. I had coached with, you know, I was like, well, because I have a lot more energy and, you know, and I love to be silly and, and do the different character things. That's when you start. Yeah. You go, okay, let's go over here. Who do I talk to? You know, Mark Grau. Lori Allen, um, you know, working with people more in the character and animation field. Right. And then you start Tina Marasco and you start, you know, you start learning. Um, I've coached with Richard Redfield and David Alden, who I just enjoy them tremendously for promo and trailer work and, and Jeff Howell. And so as, as you get going, then you kind of start figuring out, yeah, the nuance, the niche, where do I fit? Where am I comfortable? And where do I book? Right. 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 So. Speaking of where I fit, you've described yourself a couple of times uh, as a creative freelancer. When I spoke in Dallas last year about future-proofing your business, one of the things that I said was, one of the points that I made was, I think it behooves voice actors and really any freelance creative in a given field, as we move forward here, uh, to see yourself more as a creative freelancer who maybe primarily does voiceover, mm -hmm. graphic design, you name it, videography, whatever, but that you also bring your other skills to bear because oftentimes, you know, multiple streams of income is not a bad thing. Talk about that and, and how that's come to bear in your it. life. Love it. And I remember hearing you talk and I'm just, I was just applauding so loudly in my mind because again, as someone who came in, you know, later and, and has again, a, a multifaceted background, I do not believe you can be one note anymore. There are the vets, the veteran voice actors. We love them. We respect them and we hear their stories. But the ones that are like, yeah, I've got an agent. I've never even edited my audio before because I always, I just send it off or I haven't had, right. you know, I've always, I've always had an agent. And, and so the work always came to me. I have not done a pay to play. I agree with you. I do not think the days of, I just walk into a booth, say a 30 second script and walk out and magic happens works anymore. Um, so to your point, I. I'm a writer. I produce videos. Um, I'm sure you saw my post. I just produced two commercial, uh, two um, radio spots. Many of these things are not cosmic things. They are not overly challenging, but back to the confidence, back to the hustle culture. If a client comes to me and is like, I want to do a spot. If I can say to them, I can help you write it, or yep. I can help you tweak your script. I'll voice it. And if you're wanting some simple music beds or just a little bit of sound effects or something to go with it, great. And guess what? They're going to pay you more to do that. And if you are confident and capable, I got to tell you, I've heard a lot of garbage on all, all different mediums. I've heard garbage on network TV. Yes. Right. And again, so, but, but why not? That'd be my other question to folks. Why not? Why not? 
If you why? have the skill, why not use it? I, that's just it. And guess what? You get to you get to own all of it. And I and I just I think there's some pride in that. And also, I'm a person to and this is one of the things that my you know, several people have said to me that stands out as part of being a leader is I don't claim to know everything, but I'll go find out if I can't. And if I can't find it, I'll find the person who can. So exactly. to your point, when we talk, because again, I talk about always talking about networking and relationships, just like you, maybe I'm just like, I don't have the brain bites, or maybe I truly do not have the skill, but guess what? Build relationships, connect with people, not only who hire you, this is a quote by Jen Greenfield. Connect with people who can help you. Absolutely. Why not build a team? Why not? You don't have to become a full-on production company, but why not have that in your back pocket? Hey, I know I can write and, re and you know read your script. I'm going to call Roy. He'll lay some tracks, master it, throw him some money. I mean, they, the client doesn't know. Right. And what an opportunity. And, and now... You, and it doesn't have to be someone even like Ro Uncle Roy, who we love, but it could be a local studio. Right. How, hu how wonderful is that? Support and conversely, it could be a video producer in Brazil. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So um, that's, that's kind of my, when we talk about hustle culture, when we talk about, learn something new if you don't know it. Or just, again, try. Why not? If you can make more money and you, how many times do we say in the industry, under promise, over deliver, you know, if they just came to you for the one thing, can you say, Hey, I can also go ahead and do this for you too. What? You exactly. would look like a rock star. Absolutely. The more things that you can do, especially, and we, we talked about this in Dallas too, especially if, for example, if you're a voice actor, if they're voiceover adjacent. Can you yes. edit and produce? Can you do videography or at least edit, you know, picture to sound, right? Can you, uh, can you write, like you said? The things that are adjacent to your core competency, if you can develop adequate competency around those skills, then now, as you said before, you become a one-stop shop. And you right? talk about time management. I think there's a misconception for newer talent <laughs> that I'm in the booth eight hours a day. Yeah. Um, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're not. You're not. And no. you probably shouldn't be if you are. It just sounds a little unhealthy. I mean, you may book a job or have some auditions and it takes you 20 minutes. It could take you maybe a few hours. Audiobook narrators, I give you a little grace. Um, but for the most part, it's how you prioritize your time. This is the same thing when people say, I don't have time to post on social media or yeah, or I don't have time to learn a new skill. I, yeah, you do. You? do. Really? Here's, what, here's what you currently have time for. <clears throat> Game of Thrones, yes. Candy Crush, Wordle. <laughs> uh, you know, you've got time for all that garbage. Yep. Then you have time to market your business, grow your skill set, whatever it might be, do things to change your life, right? And the hustle part, I also really emphasize this a lot. Hustle culture has nothing to do with me trying to do what you do, me trying to catch up to you, me. Uh, hustle is you against you. Absolutely. Hustle is. Can I do a little bit better than I did last year? Hustle is, did I do a little bit more than I did yesterday? Right. Hustle is just improving you. When I think hustle, I, I visually, I picture some, you know, mall walker, just like arms shaking, booty swaying, moving through that mall. <laughs> so <clears throat> be that for you. So get, find that energy, eat right, move, be hydrated and think of that, whatever that visual is for you to be like, all right, let's do this. What's your, let's do this motivation. That's hustle. Yes. That's it. And, and, and get your sleep. And, and I think when we think, especially corporately of hustle culture, it's being in at 6 a.m. and leaving uh, the office at 11 p.m., yes. right? That's not hustle. Hmm. That is, that's just busy. You know, that's Burn just out. 
Yeah, burnout, exactly. And uh, you cannot hustle. You cannot take care of those around you. You cannot do any of that without first taking care of yourself. Love when it. you talk about the physical end of it, get your sleep, get your hydration, make sure your diet is balanced, make sure you eat well and move your body so that, look, folks, this is a physical instrument, right? This voice that we all use to make a living. If you don't take care of the vessel that carts this thing around, you don't stand much of a chance. Right? Now, I'm not saying Says have- the guy who's been sick for 47 <laughs> yeah. days. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying you have to try crazy yoga challenges like I do. <laughs> <laughs> for a while there, I thought we were going to call you pretzel Jen Greenfield. Oh, my gosh. I, I have so many Jen. Uh, yeah. Nicknames. But. <laughs> oh my gosh. But no, I complete I completely agree with you. So so part of being freelancers, um, and we've talked about this, is also looking around where you are. You know, we talked earlier about moonshot. We talked about, oh, I just I want to do this really, really wild big thing. But there is there is something to be said for look around you. How can you support businesses in your community? How can you know, can you provide voice? We're coming into a political season. Are there constituents around you that you can reach out to. Um, I'm a brainstorm kind of person, like who, you know, where can I go? What can I do? I, I, you know what? I'm your audience can't see this. Oh, I don't have it in here. I went to Barnes and Noble with the kiddos and there's a section that has like local periodicals. And there was one called, I'm giving you my, I'm giving it away guys. It was called Phoenix Dining or something like that. Paul Schmidt, this was 200 pages of advertising. Wow. If you don't think I'm not going to contact every single person in this, this was free. I didn't have to even Google anything. I didn't have to go do lead generation. I didn't have to hire anybody. You know what I did? I spent $6 on a stacked magazine chock-a-bock full of people quick, paying money quick math that's three cents a lead right 200 leads for six bucks you're I'm... welcome listeners <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> i'm just telling you there is inspiration in so many places the thing that i find and you said this right at the beginning and i'm this is a general statement friends people don't do the work they don't do the work. They don't want to try. People will pay hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars for leads that a whole bunch of other voice actors got. Um, like you are unique in where you live. Take advantage of it. Yeah. You are unique in who you know. Take advantage of it. I'll give you a great example. One of the best jobs I got, not the highest paying, right? Let's let's differentiate. Um, was a referral from a friend I went to high school with. And it was to do the voice. I'm, I am the, I do all the mess, phone messaging for Rosewood Hotel Group. And if you don't know them, they are one of the highest end international hotel chains in the world. I mean, Hong Kong. And this was because she said, hey, Jen, can you do the messaging? I'll just connect you with them. And it was another example of, what do you, what's your price? We went back and forth. Right. And I told David Tobin what I had tried because I said, what was the GVAA rate guide for, you know, voice messaging? His eyes went, you charged what? And he was like, that's pretty darn good. Wow. And, nice. And now I'm in because I right. just, they just opened a new hotel and they were like, Hey Jen, we need an up, you know, we need a new for this. And I just sent it to him, charged him a studio fee done but it's you never know where the the leads can come from but and although we want to think big guys stack them up look around you who who do you have relationships with you said something that really resonates with me and that is most people won't or don't want to do the work i know why i think that is why do you think it is (laughs) they're scared of putting themselves out there. Yeah. Don't know what to say. And? Don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know where we're going with this. Well, I just, (laughs) uh, putting themselves out there because they're afraid, the root fear, I think, is fear of rejection. Oh, yes. Yes. 
and it breeds procrastination. Oh, right? yeah. If I don't put myself out there, I can't be judged. Uh, or if I, as Br- Brene Brown says, and I'm going to butcher this, but it's a yeah. paraphrasing of what she says. If I look perfect, act perfect, and do everything perfect, then and only then am I worthy of love or approval, right? Which is garbage. It's garbage. It's just garbage, but that's the story. I think a lot of us, not just as voice actors, as human beings, tell ourselves in our heads, no? But let's let's go there for just a second. Because you said it again, and I said it earlier. We're human beings. I have, I, when I spoke in Dallas, I did a whole portion of my, of my um, session on being an introvert. How many times is that used as a front for, ah, yeah, but I'm an introvert. I don't, I'm, I'm not good at talking to people. And I always say, most introverts that I know have friends. They are married. There are introverts running major businesses. So, yeah, you can. You got to be comfortable. You got to know your audience, you know. And, but you can. And so when you say, you know, the, the fear, uh, the fear of rejection. So where I'm going with that is you have, you know, like I have friends. You're my friend. You and I have both flubbed. Oh my God. How many times? No, don't count. Don't answer that. Like today? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. We but might be know. near triple g- digits just oh, today. Yeah. And in my time zone, it's only one thirty. So, <laughs> but it's the reminder that we're human. Right. I mean, and, and people do not automatically reject me when I say something dumb, when I misspeak, when I don't um, use proper grammar in an email. Like, these things are little mini forms of rejection, and I'm never actually rejected. Yeah. People give grace. They're human. And to me, I, in my experience, because ta- we talk about cold calling, and I know that's not something you know most people even do anyway, and I know you're not a fan, but the, the point is, even if you were to do it, what's the worst that's going to happen? I mean, have you ever messaged someone on LinkedIn and just said, hey, I'd like to connect, and somebody message back and it was like never message me again you sorry son of a and it's just this horrible awful thing no two things are going to happen cool yeah i'll connect or nothing right if you call someone have you ever been chewed out for asking a question i I mean i just i have never that has never happened to me and i'm using it capital n never happened Again, I think that's the other part is you you make up scenarios in your head of what's going to happen, and it's not reality. It's it is not. a human on the other end of the line every time. I can't tell you. I, I, I was talking to somebody about this yesterday. It probably happens a couple times a month where I'll get an email from somebody who, for the first time, who I've maybe marketed to and have never heard from, or I marketed to them years ago. Mm -hmm. and have never heard from. Not a word. And they'll reach out and go, hey, Paul, I think I finally have something for you. Here's a job. Love it. Thank you. Right? Just because you're not getting an answer doesn't mean the answer is no. Oh, that's good. I like that. Yes. And that's true for auditions too. Just because you didn't get selected doesn't mean you sucked. It just means you weren't the person that was selected for that role. Right? Cranston. I'm going to butcher Cranston now since I'm in uh, paraphrase mode. (laughs) Cranston says, you're not there to get the job. You're there to do good enough work that they take notice. Yeah. He might not be, he might not be good. You know, he he might not be the perfect guy or she might not be the perfect girl for this role, but damn, that was a good audition. We're going to end up working with that person down the road somewhere. And, you know, to your point, you know, to even to the Cranston butchered paraphrase, (laughs) Guys, how many times are we hearing coaches say, take a risk, stand out? Yeah. Yeah, follow the specs and follow up with something completely unexpected. And if you don't know how to do that yet, you will. You will. Maybe, maybe, you know, to me, that kind of, that's why I really enjoy improv and I do encourage it. A lot of people are like, I don't see where that really comes into play. Well, what it does is brings you fully 
out of your comfort zone and puts you on the spot and 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 makes you access voices and thoughts and like weird movements that you're like I would never have normally done that that that's not Jen this is something else but it forces you to get out of your comfort zone and I think that's when that development happens of freedom of risk taking of confidence because you've done it and you're like I know who I am over here and I can give this very conversational read da 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 da, da. but then if I want to really blow it up stand out don't worry about the job connect with the listener or impress them, wow them, give them something unexpected. Yeah, that's when Fantastic. you take taking notice. I and love that, it. ladies and gentlemen, is how you beat AI, Woo right? <laughs> that's, that's acting. That's exactly what that is. I want to, I want to wrap up with this because yes. you and I have talked about this at times mm -hmm. or talked around it privately by text, uh, sometimes in person when we get to see each other at conferences yeah. and what have you. Uh, we, we've talked a lot on this channel and on this podcast about the fact that there's definitely a glut of voice actors. Let me kind of flip the script on you a little bit. Do we yeah. have a glut of coaches as well? Oh my word. You know, the answer. <laughs> you know, the answer. I know, I know what you're going, I mean, I know your general answer, but answer that for the folks listening to the podcast. We do. We do. And, you know, it, I, I'm actually going to take something from J. Michael Collins, who said that a lot of the established folks aren't coaching because they need the work. They need the money. Um, they really, you know, it, 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 it's for different reasons. And what I'm finding lately is, here's the other thing. Sorry. Okay. I'll get on the train of thought here for a second. Um, isn't it interesting? when coaches coach on what they've learned from other coaches. I always find that really interesting. Um, I'm a very go to the source kind of person. Like if I have a problem, I'm going to the CEO, I'm not doing middle management, right? So I kind of think it's interesting when folks start sharing wisdom, tips and trips, and knowledge, and you're like, yeah, but that's, so-and-so's actually tips and tricks and knowledge. And, and so what I think happens is it's an opportunity. People are, people are coaching and they are learning and then they're making that their presentation. Um, and I, I don't know if it's for the right reasons either. Um, and I don't know how you, as a new coach, price yourself, um, and what your end goal is. You know, I give JT and AB and I, we have this conversation a lot. And it's the same with you, Paul, where we're unique is we have nothing to sell. Right. right? We don't, we don't have, we don't have anything. We're not coaches. You know, we're tr trying to share information. Right. Um, and so where I go with that is the why. Why does everybody want to be a coach? There's the information is there. We have wonderful, fabulous um, industry coaches. And I always encourage people, you know, learn from people outside of the voiceover industry too, when it comes to, you know, different aspects of growing your business. It doesn't always have to just be the same people in the industry. But, but what is your why? Because I kind of just wonder, is it just to make some money? I don't know. It's a hard conversation. I, you know, are there people who are qualified because they're booking work? Are they qualified because they're reaching to just a different audience? I don't know. It's I don't know either. I, a couple, couple things there. I think we're all products of the people that we learn from, right? Yes. Uh, so, for example, in football, they talk about coaching trees. Well, these five guys, they worked under Bill Belichick and then they went on to become head coaches. Uh, and you know, damn right, well, they're, reteaching stuff that they learned from the guy that they learned from. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, I think there's some of that in every business. And I think a lot of it is fairly natural. Your point about why uh, sticks with me, yeah. Simon Sinek. And I just posted this the other day, Simon Sinek famously said, people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. Right. And I make a point whenever I meet with students and I talk to between two and 10 voice actors a week about the VO freedom master plan. Yeah. I, I, and I apologize up front because 
a large part of the conversation is about my why, why I got into the coaching side of this. That's good. Uh, and I think it's hugely important because if you're going to invest your money with a coach, then you need to assess, as we said in last week's video, you need to assess fit. And a yeah. lot of that speaks to why that coach is there, right? You know why you're there. Why is that coach there, right? And if you can ascertain that and, and, and figure out for yourself whether that's a fit for your goals, your values, what you want to learn, how you want to learn it, and all that stuff, then I think you're much better served. And that's why I say interview coaches, talk to them. One of those questions is, why are you doing this? I love that. And I, you know... I Yes, just yes, yes to all of it. I the why for so many folks, especially when they've been in the business a very short period of time, many of whom have been in less than I am. Um, I just I don't know the why. Yeah. Um, I, I I really don't. And and I again, like you can you can be an influencer. I use that term loosely uh, for even newer folks, you know, and support them. But then inevitably, you know, we find misinformation missed or maybe inaccurate information. And I also am not, let me make this very clear. I'm also not a pedestaler. That's, that's, there's my new word for that. I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm not a pedestaler. I am also not a person that says, well, this is the one person who can teach on this topic. Exactly. Um, I completely disagree with that. Um, you know, we have how many commercial voice acting coaches do we have? To your point, you do need to find who their message resonates with you, their direction resonates with you, they're the fit. Um, I think it what's really gotten big is performance coaching. So I'm gonna say that because there's you doing marketing and business, and I think it's wonderful. There's not a whole lot of people that still that are still not jumping on that bandwagon. You know, you know, I like to talk about networking, and I'll talk about LinkedIn. But there's many people who can talk about that. Maybe I resonate. Maybe I explain it in a way that uh, certain people understand better. But it's the performance coaching, and you know what I think it comes down to, Paul. And I don't know how we can if this is a see and eat, fill and eat opportunity is people want feedback. Yeah. That's yeah. what they really want. It's yeah. not that people need to keep coaching and coaching and how do I authentically read? And when we always say, just be you, it's how'd this sound? How's my sound? How's my audition? How are my two takes? I think people need feedback coaches, not coaches, but just feedback. And I think that is really what people are thirsting for. I think that's the emotional need, but I do okay? think this is a craft. And if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. Oh, no, I agree with right? that too, but I like that the emotional side. Yeah, that's yeah. a good. That's I think that's what drives a lot of it, right? Uh, I also think that uh, for newer folks, they, uh, they're looking for love in all the wrong places, right? They want to post, post their demos online and have oh. every Joe Blow and Jane Blow give critiques and comments. And People ask me for demo critiques. I'm like, I'm a business coach, right? Yeah. Go find a good performance coach and not only get a critique of your demo, but get better. Just get better. Love right? it. And that's what we talk about with the AI. That's what, you know, all of the things is you need to be the best version of you and bring the emotional, bring the business. It's all tied together. One disclaimer for the entire conversation, I have to say, <laughs> Jen has not really been naked. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is, is wonderful. Always a pleasure. I call you my work wife because you're the closest thing I have in this business. You and I talk more yep. uh, than just about any any uh, of my voiceover friends, with the possible exception of Craig Williams. Maybe he maybe he's my work brother. Right? He's fine. We like Craig. Fine. We, we love Craig. Craig. I'll tell you a quick story as it relates to you. Yeah. Uh, Craig and I and you, of course, we were all at One Voice Dallas. Yep. And uh, uh, at one point, I was trying to find you, and I found Craig first. And uh, <laughs> I, I said, Craig, <laughs> maybe you know this. Day. I, have I told you the story? I don't know. I, I'm trying I to said, be Craig, you know. Craig, have you seen Jen? <laughs> and, he, and I said, it's weird because I saw her. She was the first person I saw when I was walking down the stairs. And Craig turns to me and says, Paul, Jen is the first person everyone sees when they're walking down the stairs. Because 
you have this energy right about you and it's true that was the best way i think anybody's ever described you other than than a force and and that you are my friend it is a pleasure to know you it's been a great pleasure to talk to you my god we've gone a while uh, we covered is, a lot of we covered yeah, we a did. lot of ground, my friend. Yes, we my did. Goodness. Tell us what's coming up for you and VO Booth Besties. Uh, let's see. Um, we've yeah, just we continue to do our live interviews on YouTube on Thursdays. Uh, you will find Alicia and myself at VO Atlanta. So I do hope nice. that you're there. Look at the stairs. You'll hear my voice probably before you see me. I'm very loud. In a room of over a thousand people, <laughs> Jen will be the first person you see or hear <laughs> or hear. Yeah, or hear. Yeah, I'm, I'm pleased to be loud. Um, no, so we've, yeah, so we're excited about that. And just like we've been talking about, I'm, I am going to be diving into my 200 page periodical of, um, advertising opportunities uh locally and just doing what i do just hustling so and and possibly coming to late night with taylor tomlinson sometimes i'm working it don't don't count me out i'm working it that or you know wouldn't it be nice to get that call and say you know what guys I'm going to have to work that in because I'm also uh, narrating Love It or List It. But eh. I, think I, I can squeeze you in. I'll squeeze it in. <laughs> Who Jen knows? Don't, I just, I love the support. Everybody is so kind. Paul, put a pin in it. We got to talk social media another yeah. time. Yeah, oh, we do. We do. Good yeah. God. We, we're at an hour already. So <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> we'll just have to have you back, right? Fine. Awesome. I Jen, agree. Thanks so much.